Welcome back. I'm glad to see you today. And today I think we'll do a beautiful little winter scene that has a lot of warm colors in it, so it's not so cold that it's, it's unpleasant. And I'll have them run all the colors across the screen that you need to do this painting, starting with the titanium white and going around. And they'll come across your screen in the same order that I have them on my palette. So while they're doing that, let's get started in doing Almighty Painting together. I'm going to take off today with a, the large brush, start with a little bit of phthalo blue, and just work it into the bristles. And to that, let's add a little bit of Van Dyke Brown. That'll dull it down a little so it's not quite so bright. And work it in the bristles so you have a nice, even distribution of color all the way through the, the bristles there. Okay, let's go up to the canvas. And we'll start right here at the top, making our little crisscross strokes, little X's. And just let this play around and have fun. There we go. And very quickly, we'll drop a happy little sky in. There. Now, while I have this blue on the brush, this is blue and Van Dyke Brown, Let's just lay a little bit right down here. Just very quickly throw it in. And this will end up being shadows in the snow. So we really, we're not really concerned about where it goes or what happens right now. Okay, we'll wash the brush. And we wash our brushes with odorless paint thinner. Take off the excess. Hmm. And then beat the devil out of it. Okay, I'm gonna use a fan brush today and I'll take a little bit of the titanium white on the fan brush, and we load a lot of paint into the bristles. Really work it in there. Okay, let's go up here and build a happy little cloud in the sky. We'll use just the corner of the fan brush and make little tiny circles. Little tiny circles. There we go. Just, just let them fall right off that fan brush. And keep your brush moving. Don't stay in one place and keep working. If you do, you're gonna end up with a big cotton ball up in the sky. We don't want that. Want beautiful little fluffy free clouds. Okay, maybe, maybe right there. Wherever you want them. Wherever you want them. Drop them in. Okay. Maybe there's one that lives there. You have to make these decisions. Where does all these little clouds live? Where do they play? And in your world, you put them where you want them. Okay, you need areas that are thick, areas that are thin, areas that have no paint at all. Okay, let's take the large brush, and we're gonna go up here and just very, very gently blend the bottom of the cloud. Don't wanna touch the top at all yet. Just the bottoms. There we go. Okay, let's blend this one over here. And probably one of the biggest mistakes made when people do clouds is they overwork them. Don't overwork them. Okay, now we'll fluff them and grab them, fluff it up. And you're gonna pull all kind of little things up in the sky when you do this, don't worry about them. Don't worry, because when we blend all this, they'll go away, okay? Now, very lightly, very lightly, very lightly, I'm just gonna go across. This is three hairs and some air. Just let it sort of graze it. Isn't that easy? We have a beautiful little sky with some clouds floating around in it and ready to go. All right. Now today, I want to put some little trees that are wee, wee back in the distance. So I'm going to take, we'll take some phthalo blue and alizarin crimson. Phthalo blue and alizarin crimson. Now the blue's many, many times stronger than the crimson. And to that, I'm going to add a small amount of white. And we're making a purplish color, lavender color. There. Okay, now I'm gonna take and put some paint thinner in that, and make it quite thin, quite thin. Let's go up to the canvas now. And up here, and we'll just put in some basic little shapes, We back here. We're not looking for detail. These are background trees that are gonna end up way far, far away. This is a very quiet little painting, very soft. A little more paint thinner. Okay. Just here and there. Just let these sort of fall in wherever you want them. This is your world. Drop them in. And maybe here and there you can see just a little bit more detail. We don't want a great deal of detail yet. It's still too far away. Just here and there. Paint's quite thin, 
quite thin. Need this thin paint to stick on top of the thicker paint on the back. There. And that'll give us a basic idea of some little background trees. And with a large brush, I'm gonna, I wanna create the illusion of mist in here. So I'm gonna take the large brush and tap the bottom of this. Just really raise cane. This is where you take out all your hostilities. There. I'm gonna soften the bottom of this till it's just like mist. And here and there, I'm gonna let a few of them come right up above the tops so it looks like little soft trees far, far away. There we go. Just really raise cane. And then gently, gently lift upward. And it'll create the illusion of mist back here. And anything that we get down in here, we'll use that for shadows in the snow, so don't worry about it. Okay, maybe we'll put a, another layer or two here, and I'm gonna add to that same color a little bit of Van Dyke Brown, a little Burn Umber. And we'll just begin working a little bit closer here and there. A little brown, a little umber. And we can put a little bit more depth in this. Each one of these planes creates more depth in your painting. That's what makes it look good. I'm still keeping this paint quite thin. Just tapping the canvas. There. See how easy that is? Just tap it. And it'll make the impression of all kinds of little things happening. Okay. A little bit more of the paint thinner. A little more umber. Maybe there's a few things in here that are a little bit more distinct. Don't want too much, too much yet. It'll, we'll lose that feeling of distance if we get too much detail We back here in the background. And once again, with a large brush, I want to create mist at the bottom of this layer. And the more planes or the more layers that you put in a painting, the deeper it looks. So we're just creating depth in the background right now. Once again, very lightly, this is just barely caressing the canvas. Lift up, lift up, there. And you can make as many layers of this as you want. And each, each layer will make it deeper, look farther away and create more depth in your painting. Okay? So, now let's go and begin building some beautiful little bushes that are protruding up through the snow here. And, 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 I'm gonna go right into a little bit of the burn umber, a little white, and I'm just mixing these colors on the brush. Just tap them. Just tap them. Okay, let's go right up in here, and maybe we'll begin putting in just some little things happening way back here. And I'm just using the corner of the brush and just barely touching the canvas. This is a very warm brown. It's almost, almost like a, a burnt sienna color. Very warm brown. Very soft. And I've added a little bit of white there, just to soften it down. Now I'm gonna go into a small amount of yellow ochre on the brush and just begin tapping the top. Just very soft, very quiet. Now these are some of the warm colors I was telling you. So it keeps this winter scene from looking so cold and a lot of times in the winter, Snow covers the ground and you still have bushes and stuff that create all these beautiful brown tones. There we go. Very soft and quiet. Okay, maybe, maybe, maybe. We'll take our liner brush and I'll go right into a little bit of the Van Dyke Brown, just like so, and turn that brush. That brings it to a nice sharp point. Okay, let's go up to the canvas. Maybe we can see a few little tree trunks back in here. And all we do is touch the canvas, because this paint's very thin. It'll slide right off your brush. There. Thin paint will stick to a thick paint. And we'll put a few little indications of some trees back in here. Don't want, don't want too much detail yet. Just a few little tree indications. There we go. Here and there. There's one that lives over here, wherever, wherever. You have to make these almighty decisions and drop these things in. 
let them happen. Just let them flow right out of your mind. Okay. And then we'll take another fan brush and begin deciding where I'm going to have some snow in here. I'm using several fan brushes so I don't have to go back and forth and wash them so often. Load a lot of the titanium white and I'm going to put the smallest, smallest amount of permanent red in there. Or lizard crimson. Lizard crimson, I'm sorry. A little bit of a lizard crimson. Just to give it a little pinkish hue to break it up. And let's go right up to the canvas. Now, angles, strokes are very, very important. Very important. Follow the lay of the land. There, just barely, barely touching the canvas. Follow the lay of the land. It's most, most important. And you do these paintings in stages, completing the area that's farthest away and working forward. Just work forward. And I had a little, tiny bit of blue in there to create some shadows. There we go. See how soft and pretty that is? And it's easy. Very, very easy. Let the canvas work. Now back to my burn umber. And I can let some of these little bushes and stuff run right down on the snow. That easy. Just let them go. It's your world. Let it happen. I'm going to add a small amount of cadmium yellow. And just put it right on the top. Right on the top where the light's striking. Don't want too much. Just a little. I'm going to just let this one maybe come right on out. And anytime you add one of these little hills here, Go back with your fan brush and clean up the edges. See, you can just clean it right up. And if a little of that brown comes into your snow, that's fine. It really helps. It really gives it depth. Okay, now, maybe in here there's a little hill. It comes right from here. Now you want that a little bit whiter, a little bit, a little bit more of the white color up here so it stands out from that one back there. lay some snow right in there. See all these little colors and the shadows that we laid in there are beginning to show through. I was using very little paint and just stroking the canvas. Okay. I just let all these little things happen. Now maybe, 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 maybe there's another little group of bushes that live right here. You have to make these decisions and drop them in wherever you want them. Just drop them in. Maybe it comes right down there. And we'll go back into a little bit of the yellow ochre. Yellow ochre. It's a beautiful, beautiful warm color. And once again, all I'm doing is just barely tapping. I want the color to be on the top of each little hill. Barely tapping. Sort of a different way to use the brush than we've used it before. But it's a lot of fun. And any way you can use a piece of equipment to get a desired effect, that's really all that counts. Any way you can use it. Now we can clean up these little edges and create the lay of the land. See, I'm pulling a little bit of that brown down into the snow. It helps carry through the shadows. And you can just make as many layers as you want in here, or you can take them out. Just let your imagination go. Let it go. Okay. Don't want to lose this little white line here. If you lose that, we're going to lose our separation. We don't want to lose that. Maybe here and there some of these run up and Okay. Now, let's play with some trees. Trees are always fun. Always fun. And I'm going to make a very, very dark color for some trees in the background back here. And we'll make that by using phthalo green and alizarin crimson in about equal parts, maybe a, maybe a little bit more crimson. 
then the phthalo green. And when you mix these two colors together, it makes a beautiful, beautiful black. Very dark, very, very dark. Strong color, but very transparent because both phthalo green and lizard and crimson are transparent. Okay, now, let me clean my knife. And let's take another fan brush and we'll pull that through there and get a lot of color on the brush. There, just see, you can see. Just really pull it through the wiggle it, wiggle it. That helps. Loads of paint into the bristles and sharpen it. Okay, let's go to the canvas. Maybe there lives right here. Uh, there it is. There's an old tree. He lives right there. Right there. I knew he was there. There. You knew he was there too, didn't you? Okay, and he comes right down here. And that's where his foot's at. And maybe, maybe this old tree's got a friend. I say it all the time, trees get lonely too. They need friends. We all need a friend. And maybe there's some leaves on this. And we just sort of work back and forth here with the fan brush. And just give the impression of some beautiful little leaves. There, see how easy those are to drop on? Just need indications. Now, yeah, we'll give this other one here. This is, once again, phthalo green and alizarin crimson. Beautiful, beautiful color. And see, just that easy, it gives us the impression that there's some beautiful little limbs out there. Maybe, maybe right here lives another little tree. He's not as big. He will make him farther back. And we'll put a few, he needs a few little leaves on him, too. There we go. Needs a little foot to stand on. Don't want him to fall over and hurt himself. Okay, now we need to, down here on the bottom, we need to clean that up a little to bring it all together. So I'll just take the large brush and just gently tap. Bring it all together. And then with our fan brush, pull a little bit of snow in there. And that easy, we got it fixed. Now while I've got this, this black color on my brush here, maybe, 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 maybe there's a big tree that lives right here on the edge, and all we can see is a few of his limbs hanging over. There he comes. And when you're doing this, leave some holes in your tree so some sky shows through. It makes it look deeper. Don't, don't cover the entire canvas. There. Makes it look like there's a tree. It, the trunk's really off the canvas. We don't see it. All we see is some limbs hanging over here. Okay, I'll take a little bit of yellow ochre and just barely tap here and there. Same brush, same brush, didn't, didn't clean it, nothing. Just want a little tiny, tiny bit of yellow ochre. Just to give it a little character, not much. Tiniest little bit. There, and that's really enough. And, and I'm going back to the liner brush with paint thinner and a little brown on it. And maybe there lives right here. Another little tree. Wherever, wherever. And you can put as many of these in your world as you want. Let them happen. Let them happen. All we're doing here is giving you ideas. What you do with them. Oh, everybody sees nature differently. Let it happen. Okay, let's put some, let's have some fun. Let's have some fun. I'm gonna go right into some Van Dyke Brown. Get a lot of paint on my brush, just Van Dyke Brown. Let's go right up here. Maybe there's a tree that's a little bit closer and we can see a little more. Now, a lot of times on the edge of the evergreen trees, there's all kinds of little things that hang out the side, little burry things, whatever you call them. But they're not smooth, they're rough. Evergreens a lot of times are rough. So, but just tapping with a fan brush, we can create that illusion. And then on the other side of the tree, we'll take a little white and a little brown, and we'll come right down and make the other side of the tree. So you need a little light here. 
This tree's a little closer, it's gonna have a little more detail. Show you how to make those. See there? Isn't that super? Told you it was easy. There, just let it come right on down. And, 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 maybe there's a little of that color in the snow. We'll create a little shadow image back here. Just a little bit of shadow. And with a nice clean fan brush, we can very lightly, very lightly just blend that right in. Let a little look. there. It makes it look like a little shadow back here. Maybe there's a tiny bit of snow goes up the side of the tree and comes down. There we go. Just let these little things happen. All right. Now, let's put a few little limbs on that tree. And maybe they just hang out like so. Wherever. Let them go, here and there. And you can do this with a liner brush. It comes to a much sharper point if you want to. Now, you know that old, old tree is so much fun. Tell you what, let's go, let's go right over in here and we'll make a great big almighty tree, a big strong tree. Give you some practice doing that. And he lives right there. Just make a decision, drop him in, wherever you want him. Let him go. Using Van Dyke Brown. I want this edge to be all rough and fuzzy. There. Just put a lot of dark in there. Just really drop it in. Really socking that canvas. Okay, then I'll take a brush that has my white and brown on it. And we'll come right down here and do a a light side for the tree. Tree needs a light side to make it look round. Need a dark and a light side. There we go. And just sort of let that play around wherever you think light would hit. Great big old tree. This big tree's been here for a hundred years or so. He has seen a lot happen. wise old tree and then maybe we'll bring a little bit of snow comes right up here and blend that in see just set him right down into the painting that easy just bring some snow right up around his little foots big foots that's big foots big foots there and that easy that easy you set him right down into the painting now then, let's take a little bit more of the brown. And maybe there's a big limb that hangs right off the canvas and maybe it comes down and maybe it just bends. Oh, there it goes, comes right back across the tree. Big, big limb. This is a large tree, he needs a large limb. And a little arm on the limb, wherever. And it helps give the tree a, a little personality. There's always dead limbs hanging on the bottom of evergreen trees. Don't avoid them. They're, they're what give the tree character. Don't avoid them. Let them little son of a guns come out and sparkle in the sunshine. Okay, now, as I say, we could take the liner brush if we wanted to and add a little more detail to some of these, and all you do is thin the paint down, and you can bring out all kinds of little limbs. And you can just let these go and go and go wherever you want them. Okay, I'm going to take a small amount of, this is almost straight burn umber, and I'm going to put a little weed here and there, and I'm just using the corner of the fan brush, touch, lift up, touch, lift up, just to put some little leafy, little leaves, or leaves, little, little sticks and twigs and stuff there, just to break up some of this white snow area, just here and there. Maybe, I'll tell you what, maybe, maybe, maybe. Maybe there's a little stone that lives right out here. There, see there? He puts a little stone in. And we'll take, let me wash the pan brush here real quick. I'm gonna take a little bit of the titanium white. Now you gotta pull it over the stone because there's, there's snow on top of the stone. So you just touch, come right over the stone. Bloop, see there? 
It's in. It's easy. And it's fun. Just like so. That's all there is to it. Okay. I think we're about to the point where we have a painting that we can sign. So I'll take a little bit of paint thinner. And I'm going to work it. I'm, I've got a little permanent red on the palette here. I always sign with permanent red. Turn that brush. Turn it so it comes to a beautiful, sharp point. Look at there. Okay. Let's go up here and sign this rascal. And this is the part that's fun, because then you have a completed painting. Makes you feel all good inside. And I hope you've enjoyed this one. It's a very soft painting. I think it'll bring you many hours of relaxation and fun. And from all of us here, We'd like to wish you happy painting. God bless. See you next week.